um, dividing polynomials by factoring and canceling some of the terms on uh, both the dividend and the divisor. And that just means the top and the bottom, the numerator and denominator. Uh, and basically we had problems that sort of look like this. Okay, uh, Whenever you have a problem like this, you're going to want to approach it in one of the two different ways. Either you're going to use the long division. Oops, that says log. I meant long <laughs> division. Uh, yeah, you're either going to want to use long division. Damn, I did it again. Okay, long division. Or you're going to want to use factoring. Okay. Normally, factoring is the way to go. If you can factor, best set, best case scenario. Okay. Long division, not as great, but it works for everything. Even the ones where you're factoring. Okay. Now, you guys are going to have a final. It's going to be taken through on track. I'm not really sure about how it's going to work out. You guys taking it from home. I think what they're going to do is have us give you guys like an assigned time and then have you guys take it. And so I'm going to have to check on that. They haven't really given me information. But uh, you're probably going to have answer choices that look like this. Okay. Or they're going to look like this. Okay. Now, based on the answer choices, you might get an idea of which one to do. Okay, Look at this one. If you already started on your homework, you should recognize what these answers look like and what you should be doing in order to get this type of answer. If you did your long division homework, you should know what, how to get to this answer and what you have to do in order to get to this answer. Okay, If you haven't yet, and you're just watching this video, before you do them, this way will probably mean that you want to be using the factoring method uh, to divide the polynomials and this way probably means that you're going to want to use the long division method to divide the polynomials okay. so you want to use one or the other <coughs> okay. so let me go ahead, oh by the way these these two answers have nothing to do with this one I just had uh, that I just wrote down some random ones that way you know what these answers should look like for factoring what these answers should look like for long division okay so let's go ahead and look at one when do you see problems like this with quadratics how the answers look like might also determine what you should do to answer okay so it says express the rational expression in lowest terms okay lowest terms means simplify Simplify usually means factor stuff out too. Okay. Now look at the answers. Look at them. They're all fractions. Okay. Of course, uh, uh, long division does use fractions as well, but normally you have one term and then another term and then another term. You you never have two terms together unless it's the remainder. Okay, so this would probably tell me, oh, I need to factor some of this stuff out. At some point, I'm going to either get an x minus 7 or an x plus 3 or an x plus 3 or an x plus 2 or something like that. Okay. <coughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, factor each one of the equations individually. x squared plus 3x minus 10. And take, because we have a 1 here in the front, we can just take that 10 and get the factors of it. Okay, for 10 we have 1 and 10 obviously. Uh, we have 2 and 5. And then that's it. Okay. Now notice that we have a negative 10. So we're going to need a negative 10. That means that one of these values is going to have to be negative. So it can either be the 1 and the 2. Let's go ahead and check. Negative uh, 1 plus 10 equals 9. Negative 2 plus 5 equals 3. Oh. So it actually means that negative 2 and 5 are going to be the correct values. Okay, now notice I kind of guessed w which numbers were going to have the negatives. I could have guessed that the negative 5 and the 10 and the 5 would have been negative instead, and that would have got in positive 3. Okay. Uh, it's really up to you which one 
you decide but as long as you have get the right number in the middle you should be okay those are gonna be the values you gotta just switch the um, the negatives every once in a while so if I had gotten negative 3 instead then I would just change it back to negative 2 and positive 5 <coughs> alright I know that that wording was a little bit weird but uh, hopefully you already understand this because you guys have already learned about this you, you, should, you learned about it for three years already I think okay so uh, negative 2 and plus 5 okay so those are gonna be our fact uh, part of our factors okay so we're gonna have x minus 2 and x plus 5 that's what's on top x plus 5 right here Okay. Now on the bottom, we're going to go ahead and do the same thing, but for x squared plus 5x minus 14. So I'm going to do that off here to the side. x squared plus 5x minus 14. I'm going to take 14 because we have a 1 in the front. It's o This only works whenever you have a 1 in the front. If you have a different number, then you're probably going to have to uh, use the AC method that we worked on uh, earlier in the year. I'll probably go over that later on as well, just in case you guys forgot. Uh, but we have 14. Uh, 1 and 14 are obviously factors. Uh, 2 and 7 are factors. And mm, I think that's it. I think 3 doesn't fit, 4 doesn't fit, 5 doesn't fit, 6 doesn't fit, 7 is already here. So we already have our right values. Okay. Now, we want these numbers to add up to 5. But notice, again, we have a negative value here. so we're going to need to make one of these numbers negative. Sorry, just like before, I'm going to go ahead and guess that these might be the negative values, and if they're not, then I'm just going to switch them over to the other value. So I'd make these positive, and then make these negative. But I'm going to go ahead and check the sums. Negative 1 plus 14 gives me 13. Negative 2 plus 7 gives me 5. Okay, so that is totally the number that I want. Negative 2 and minus 7. So I'm going to go ahead and use those. Uh, for our factors. Now uh, we have x minus 2. We have x plus 7. Plus 7 because it's a positive. So I'm going to go ahead and write that in here. Okay. So if we have x minus 2 on top and we have x minus 2 at the bottom, we can go ahead and cancel these out. We have x plus 5 divided by x plus 7. Let's see which one of these holds the answer. So we have not this one not this one this one is it Let's see so our answer here is C and remember I, I was able to tell just based off the answers okay minimal work minimal time okay. next let's say we have something like this okay well simplify the following x squared plus 9x plus 7 look at the way the answers look okay these are much different from the way these look Simplify the following. Okay, well, I'm probably going to have to use long division here. <coughs> okay. So I'm going to take the number on the top, written down inside of the box, x squared plus 9x plus 7. And then I'm going to take the number at the bottom, or the variables at the bottom, really, and write in anything that's missing. In this case, I'm missing the constant, so I'm just going to go ahead and write in plus 0. Okay, it, it might not matter that I added the plus zero but just in case I'm, I put it in there okay. if it was uh, x squared plus two I would want to write down plus zero x so I, I'm not sure if this is going to help me in the end but it would in any other case Okay, so let's go ahead and see we're going to take this number and this number or variable and variable term uh, and we're going to divide them x squared divided by x squared well that's just one you know. Okay, they cancel each other out. That equals one. Okay, if you have the same thing on top of the same thing, it equals to one. This works with any other value, like let's say three and three. That's one. Okay. Um, all right. So if it's one, let's look at. Let's go ahead and look at the answers. Uh, it could be this one, this one, or this one. Can't be this one because that one has one x squared. The x squared's already cancelled out. Okay. Uh, then we're going to take that one. We're going to multiply it onto the one x squared plus two x plus zero. Uh, one times x squared is x squared. 
1 times 2x is 2x, positive 2x, and 1 times 0 equals 0. I'm going to subtract these values. Let me go ahead and change colors. Uh, change it to blue. Did I change it? Nope. There we go. Okay. Uh, we're going to subtract these values. That means that I'm going to subtract the x squared. I'm going to subtract 2x. I'm going to subtract the 0. These cancel out, so it's 0. That's exactly what we want. Anytime you're using long division, that first term always has to cancel out. Uh, 9 minus 2, uh, that's 7 x and then 7 minus 0 is minus 7 okay at this point you should know what your uh, remainder is if you get to the constants in your solution that means that the rest of it is your remainder so that means this 7x minus 7 is our remainder okay so we can go ahead and write that in let's see if any of them already have that answer uh, which I mean 1 plus 7x minus 7 divided by x squared plus 2x. I don't have to write in that 0 because that wasn't part of the original problem, so they probably want to write, write it down in, in their solution. Uh, this one has too many terms, that one has too many terms. So it turns out to be this one 7x plus 7. Well, is that plus 7? Oh, it was plus 7. Okay, my bad. Excuse me. Yeah, so it's. Uh, 7x plus 7 divided by x squared plus 2x. So this would be the right answer there. Okay. Uh, your questions? Uh, so the questions will most likely be like this on your test. Okay. Uh, for your final, you want to look at the way the answers look. It will give you a hint over what to do and how to approach the problem. Okay. And, oh, okay, so this question I actually had for you guys to answer during live class, but hopefully you can answer it now <laughs> to yourself. Um, okay, so what do you hate the most about most in math? Okay, unfortunately, this is what's going to be on the test. My guess is that you probably hate fractions. You're probably going to hate variables every single time. And all of you guys say, I used to be smart in, in middle school, but then they, they put in letters in math, and then I didn't understand it at all. Okay, your final is going to have both. Uh, you're going to have to know how to add, subtract them, and especially whenever it, they have both. You're also going to need to know how to multiply them, but multiplying is a lot easier, I think. Um, means it's uh, about the same thing as just multiplying regular numbers. Okay, now you need to know how to add and subtract fractions with variables. Okay, let me show you an example. 2 divided by x, 4 divided by x minus 9, you want to add those two together. <coughs> All right, so what do you do here? Okay, well, if you had a regular fraction like one half and one fifth, okay, that's kind of what these look like. Okay, they have uh, different numbers at the bottom, different denominators. So that's the important part here. They have different denominators. Well, you can't really mix one half with one fifth. Okay, you could try to draw it out. Okay, and that's one half. Uh, and this is one fifth. You can add them up. Uh, but that doesn't quite work with variables like it does here. Okay, uh, so instead we're going to do this algebraically. Let's see, it was one half plus one fifth. Okay, we want them to have the same denominator. How do I do this? I'm going to scale them up. Okay, so I'm going to try to see what number both uh, denominators can uh, multiply up to. Well, that's not right. Uh, basically, you want the least common multiple between both of these values right here. Okay. So, uh, you can always do this. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Do it a few times. 12, 14. You do the same thing with 5. 5, 10, 15. Uh, well, at this point, I can actually stop because our least common multiple is actually going to be 10. Okay, I take the 5 and multiply times 2, and I take the 2 and multiply times 5. Okay, so okay. if I multiply the 2 times 5, I have to multiply the number in the top times 5 as well so that the fraction doesn't change. Okay, so that becomes 5 over 10. For the uh, 1 fifth, I got to take that number multiplied by 2. So 2 times 1 is 2. Okay. 
So if I were to draw this again, this is what the pizza would look like. Um, let's see, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, so that's ten pieces, I believe. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yep. Okay. Half of them, or five, that's one half. Two of them is one fifth. So overall, we have seven over ten as our result. Okay. <coughs> now, we can't really do this for. Uh, variables and fractions, but notice how we took 5 and just multiplied it onto the 2 on the top and bottom. Okay, and notice how we took the 2 and we multiplied it onto the 5. Well, that's not right. Uh, that's a 2. And I did that to the top and the bottom. Okay, well, the same idea holds whenever you're using variables. Let me go ahead and erase this. With variables, you're going to do, you're going to take this denominator and this denominator, and you're going to multiply onto the top and the bottom of the other fraction. So I'm going to take 2 over x, and I'm going to multiply both the top and the bottom by x minus 9. Okay. x minus 9. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing for the other fraction. I'm going to take that 4, I'm going to multiply it by x. I'm going to take the x minus 9, I'm going to multiply it times x. Once I do this, once I do this, I just want to multiply out the tops and the bottoms. And you're always going to have the same denominator on the bottom, so no matter what, only do the bottom ones. So x times x minus 9, I distribute. x times x is x squared. x times negative 9 becomes minus 9x. And that's going to be your new denominator. Now the top, the top I do actually have to multiply. Uh, 2x minus 9, okay, in parentheses. I'm going to distribute, okay, so that's going to be 2x minus 18. Okay, 2 times negative 9 is negative 18, that's why I have the minus. And then we have 4x, 4 times x, which is just 4x and you want to add these two numbers up. This is just like we would normally do with fractions like we did earlier. We had 5 over 10, we had 2 over 10. The number at the bottom stayed the same, the numbers on top added up. So we got 7 over 10. Okay, so in this case we add these up. Negative 18 doesn't add up to any add on to anything. So it stays the same. 2x plus 4x, well, 2 plus 4 is 6. So this becomes 6x minus 18. This is our final answer. Yeah. Mm, can we cancel any of this out? Mm, I don't think so. It doesn't seem like it. We might be able to factor out a 2 from the top, maybe even a 3. Actually a 6, because 6 fits into 6 and negative 18. So I guess we could do that. But that's about it. <coughs> Alright, so I would probably leave my answer as this. You can factor it out and leave it like this, but they're the same value. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do another problem, another example. So let's say we have something like this. Okay, again, the denominators do not match. X minus 5 and X, those don't equal each other. So if I wanted to do a drawing of like a pizza, uh, I wouldn't have the same. Uh, number of slices for each one. So like 1 divided by x minus 5 could be like split into 2's and 5 divided by x that could be like split into 4's or something. That's how you want to think about it. You can't really combine them until they're, well this one's a bad one. Let's say it's 6 instead. Uh, you can't really combine them until they have uh, similar similar fractions as uh, or parts of a pizza, whatever. <coughs> All right, so <coughs> let me go ahead and go. Ahead. Let me go ahead and do this. Uh, we're going to take the denominators. We're going to multiply them onto each fraction, both the top and the bottom. Okay, so this x is going to go on this one and this one, and that x minus five is going to go on this one and this one. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. 
1 times x minus 5. And I'm going to multiply times x. I'm going to multiply times x. Oops. Let's see. No. Sorry, I'm still getting used to this uh, tablet. <coughs> That's not what I meant. Uh, pen. There we go. And then we're going to add onto this 5 times x minus 5. And x times x minus 5. Okay, remember I told you guys uh, you only want to do the bottom once because it's the same thing. Okay, so x minus 5 times x. We distribute x times x is x squared uh, x times negative 5 is minus 5x so this becomes minus 5x <coughs> alright 1 times x is 1x okay. 5 times x minus 5 will be distribute 5 times x is 5x 5, 5 times negative 5 is minus 25 and again we're adding these two values so we're going to take 1x plus 5x minus 25 normally you probably want to use parentheses on there if it's addition it doesn't quite matter but if it's subtraction it will matter okay so that's 1x plus 5x minus 25 over x squared minus 5x I don't think I did parentheses one for the earlier one, but uh, the same rule applies. It's just that if you have the parentheses there or not, whenever you're adding, it's not going to change the values. If it's a negative, the negative is going to distribute, and then it will change the values. So that's negative 25. If this were a negative, a minus, it would change into a plus 25. Okay, so uh, 1x plus 5x, that's 6x. Uh, minus 25 and then we still have the same denominator as before x squared minus 5x final answer <coughs> yeah. uh, oh okay so this one's a little bit different this one's a little bit uh, probably maybe more difficult I don't really want to say difficult because it's done in the same way but uh, it just has more terms Okay, so let's go ahead and do this um, we're still we still don't have the same denominator Whenever you're adding fractions or you're subtracting fractions, you want to make sure that you have the same denominator. Okay, so we have x plus 3 divided by x minus 4. Okay, make sure that your parentheses are there because whenever you start multiplying, you're multiplying both terms, not just one. Okay. And because the other one has x minus 2, that's what I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by x minus 2, x minus 2. I'm going to do the same thing for the other fraction. x divided by x minus 2. And I'm going to multiply by the denominator of the previous fraction. So that's going to be x minus 4. Okay. Uh, and then we start multiplying. Okay. Remember, only do the bottom once. Because it's going to be the same for both of these fractions. Even though the order is different, x minus 2 times x minus 4 x minus 4 times x minus 2, you're going to get the same result. Okay, So do this smarter, not harder. Okay, x minus 2. Okay, If you're not used to using FOIL or distributive property, okay, then use your box. No one's going to make fun of you for doing something the way that you know how to do it. Okay, If, if it works, it's not done x times x is x squared x times negative 2 is minus 2x x times minus 4 is minus 4x and negative 2 times negative 4 is positive 8 overall once I add up all the terms we get x squared negative 2x plus negative 4x well those combine together negative 2 plus negative 4 is negative 6 x and then we have plus 8 okay so right here for our denominator we have x squared minus 6x plus 8. On top, 
we do the same thing. We're going to take x plus 3 times x minus 2. I'm going to use the box method here too. Yeah. If it works, it's not done. x times x is x squared. x times 3 is 3x. x times negative 2 is negative 2x. And 3 times negative 2 is minus 6. Okay. Overall here we get mm, x squared. 3x plus negative 2x will become 1x and minus 6. Finally, the last one we have x times x minus 4. We want to multiply by distributing. x times x is x squared. x times negative 4 is minus 4x. And then that's it. Okay, and these are being added together, so we get x squared minus 6x plus 8. And then plus x squared minus 4x. Okay, if you're curious about what number should be right here in the front, it's a 1. If there's no number in front of the x, then it's a 1 in front of the x. Uh, and let me go ahead and simplify this. Okay. Uh, we don't really need the parentheses here because we're adding, so I'm just going to go ahead and take those off. Okay. If I was subtracting, again, it does matter. The order would matter and uh, oh, there we go. <coughs> and you would want to make sure that you distribute correctly. Okay, so we get x squared, and we have an x squared right here, so that means there's two of them. Uh, minus 6x and minus 4x, there's negative 6 plus negative 4 becomes minus 10. Uh, this is the only plus 8, the only constant, so it stays. And then the rest of it becomes, or stays the same, sorry. final answer. Okay. That's it. Mm, I think I have one more question. Mm, and I'll do this one. I'll actually probably include this in the homework that we guys have one ex one less homework question to do. Uh, but yeah, uh, let me go ahead and go back over the stuff. Uh, all right, so remember, uh, during your final, you kind of want to pay attention to the way the answers look. It's going to give you a hint over what to do or, or how to approach the problem. Okay, so you're either going to use long division, or you're going to use uh, factoring, or you might end up even using synthetic division. It depends on what the problem looks like. Okay, whenever you have fractions and variables, you want to make sure that you know how to do it, how to do a uh, fraction plus another fraction or fraction minus another fraction because it's going to be the same idea okay if you can do it for an easy problem you can do it for a harder problem you just got to follow the steps the same way okay the math works out consistently okay last one <coughs> so let's go ahead and do this we're going to multiply the top and the bottom by uh, the denominator of the uh, other fractions denominator the other fractions denominator, sorry, that was worded weirdly. Okay, so we have x plus 1. We're going to multiply that times 2x minus 2. We're going to take that x plus 5, and we're going to do the same thing. Okay. And then we're going to do the same thing for the other equation, 2x. We're going to multiply by this denominator. And the same thing in, uh, on the denominator for that fraction. 2x minus 2 times x plus 5. Okay. Now your denominator for your result is always going to be the same thing as what this and this is, so you only have to do it once. x plus 5. I'm going to use the box method. 2x minus 2. x times 2x becomes 2x squared. Uh, 2x times 5 becomes 10x, x times negative 2 becomes negative 2x, and negative 2 times 5 becomes negative 10. Overall, this equation turns out to be 2x squared, 10 minus 2 becomes positive 8x, and then minus 10. Uh, okay. <coughs> then we move on to the next one. I want to use do the, the top of this fraction. x plus 1, 2x minus 2. Okay. 
x times 2x becomes 2x squared. 2x times 1 becomes 2x. x times negative 2 becomes negative 2x. And, x pl and 1 times negative 2 becomes negative 2. Okay, overall this equation is going to turn... Whoops. I don't think you guys can see all of that. So there you go. It becomes 2x squared. <coughs> okay, that's this part. Uh, negative 2 plus 2 equals 0. So these go away. And then minus 2. Okay. Then we have one final term to multiply. 2x times x plus 5. Okay. So think about it like this. 2x gets multiplied onto the inside. You want to distribute it. This is one term itself. So we'll take 2x times x. That becomes 2x squared. 2x times 5. Well, 2 times 5 is 10. x times nothing, because there's no other x, is x. So we get 2x squared plus 10x. Uh, we're going to add these up again. So let me go ahead and write them in. 2x squared plus 8x minus 10. That's from this one. And then on the top, we're going to have 2x squared minus 2 plus 2x squared plus 10x. Overall, once you add these up, we have to get rid of the parentheses again. Okay. This is only because we're adding and the... Um, excuse me. The parentheses won't change anything whenever you're adding. Okay, it will if there was a number in front of it, like we we have here. But because there, it's just a set of parentheses with a plus in front of it, it doesn't change it. Okay, so we're gonna add up the expo the the quadratic variables. Two x squared plus two x squared. That's four x squared. Uh, then we'll add up the linear variables, which is just ten x. That's the only one. And then the constant. Uh, terms, which is minus 2. The denominator stays the same. This is our final answer. Okay. So this is what you want to do for your problems as well. Uh, there is going to be a few more lessons about this, but overall we're just going to do like one a few problems and then final review, few problems, final review, few problems, final review until the end of the cycle. Okay, I'm still not sure how the finals are going to work, but as soon as I get more information, I'll like make more videos or tell you guys during class if you guys attend the live class. Okay, until until then, then just hold up for a bit. <coughs> those of you guys who are doing work, good job. Uh, those of you guys who are at work, uh, you know what? Good job too. You know, you're taking care of your family. That's pretty important too. Uh, just make sure that you get your work done. Uh, I won't take points off for being late. Just let me know if you need that extra time. Uh, all right, I'll stop the video there. See you guys.